Welcome! I'm Bev Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up! I made this project with products from Stampin' Up! I sell these products and also a few items to make crafting more convenient. I'll have the free detailed directions for this project on my website. You'll be able to click the links for the products to be taken to my online store. And if you're interested in the card kit, there's also a PayPal button there for you. You'll see where to find all of that at the end of this video, so don't worry about taking notes. It's time to put stamps, ink, and paper together. I used Wishes and Wonder. If you're buying the card kit from me, you'll want to buy Wishes and Wonder, Cinnamon Cider Ink, and Garden Green Ink. You may also want to use Real Red Ink. Up to you. If you want to make lots of these for yourself, you might want to buy Wishes and Wonder along with the North Pole Wonder dies. You can buy them together as a bundle and save yourself 10%. And I am also using the Layering Circles dies. If you're buying the card kit from me, I'll be doing all of the cutting with the dies for you. The cardstock that you'll get in the kit, you'll get, of course, the very vanilla envelope, and you'll get dimensionals. You'll get a piece of 5 by 1 and 3 quarters wall tidings designer series paper, and another piece from that same designer series paper pack that is 5 and a fourth by 4. A piece of cinnamon cider. You can see I've already cut into this, but I'll have plenty here. And a piece of the Real Red Sheer Ribbon, which I love. About nine inches or so. A piece of Very Vanilla that's five and a fourth by four. A piece of Very Vanilla that's five and a fourth by eight. And this is scored at two and four. And a piece of Garden Green for our card base, which is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. On the piece of Very Vanilla, we're going to stamp these three images. So I have my Stamparatus out. And I want to make sure that my magnets are not where they're going to be in the way. And I'm going to ink this with a Cinnamon Cider ink. I see that there's not as much ink on this part as I want, so I'm just going to re-ink it. Stamp again. Nice thing about the Stamparatus. If you are buying the card kit from me, I will be sending you these pieces all cut out. And let me show you the easiest way to stamp these is to cut these separately and I would suggest using the grid paper here because what you're going to do is go ahead and stamp these on the grid paper and match these here and you can actually glue these down to the grid paper if you want or you can use the magnets and match these to your stamped image and you'll do that with all of these pieces and then you can actually fit these in and then you'll get a perfect image I'd like to use my Take Your Pick tool to pick these up and you'll be ready to go. But if you are doing all the work yourself, you'll take your images and I have my magnetic plate which I'm going to use. 
So you'll use your magnetic plate just like it's a clear cutting plate. Place these just exactly where you want them. And cover it up with your number three plate. And roll it through. And that gives me those pieces all cut out. Everything's first try on this new machine. I just love it. And then while these are out, I'm going to also cut up my cinnamon cider. With the cinnamon cider, I'm going to be cutting out this piece. And this detail deer. And then I wanted a, a uh, scallop circle that was large enough to go around this. So I use my taggers to find out that I want the number four smooth. And I want a scallop larger. I need it larger than that. So I went to the number three scallop. So number three scallop, number four smooth. Then you can use those to find the dies that you want. So I'm actually going to just cut out the large scallop and the deer, the detailed deer. So you have plenty of room. Cover those up. And I, that deer comes right out. And this deer has these all this little detail in here, just so pretty. And I'm going to use that smooth die. And that gives me my frame and a circle. And this circle is just large enough to cut this out. And so this is, I guess you could use this for another project, but the pieces we're going for are these. This designer series paper is the Twall Tidings designer series paper. On one side of the paper it's green and one side is red. So you get the plaid, the stripes. So you've got a couple of different uh, twall designs there. So I'm using the green plaid. You could swap out some of the other designs if you want, or you could even use the red on, on this if you'd like either. I'm just centering this on here. Again, I just put the adhesive on the outside edge. And we're ready to do the rest of our cutting. So I'm using that same smooth die. I want it about an inch and a half from the top or so. So about there. It's not real critical, but I want to have room for my greeting. Um, above where this is going to be cutting. And that gives me a hole in the front of my car. And because we just glued on the outside, I have two pieces. We're going to use this green piece for our card project today. And you could use this one for a different project. Next we're going to put the inside layer in, and so this cardstock is the same size as my usual large layer when it's folded up. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this, and we want 
this big piece on the outside. We're going to put the one and three quarters piece of designer series paper on this center panel. So pretty. And then we're going to fold this up and fold this in. And we're going to put adhesive just on this half of the circle. And I am using the liquid adhesive. I like the liquid glue especially when I'm going to be doing a little bit of wiggling and I need precise placement. So I'm putting this inside there and I'm just going to be able to pull that up like that. Finding my deer that, I, that we cut out. Putting the steer down here, making sure he's inside the panel, and then we're taking this circle I'm calling this a scallop circle. I don't know if it's really scalloped or not, but I'm centering that in there. Then I'm using some dimensionals on the stamp circle. I don't know if I mentioned, I will be giving you about 12 dimensionals for this card. Now I'm going to have this panel open and closing this and with a pencil I'm going to lightly mark the top and bottom and sides of this opening. And I'm going to stamp my greeting. May the wonder of Christmas stay with you throughout the coming year. And I want to stamp this above my mark here. and I stamped that in Cinnamon Cider. And then there's this really pretty mistletoe. I'm going to I'm going to stamp that in Garden Green. And I want to stamp that within this circle as much as I can. And while you've got that stamp out, you can also stamp your envelope. You can either stamp it in the front corner or this stamp looks like it needs to be to me on this back flap and then you can use just a regular eraser to erase the pencil marks that we made you want to wait till this ink is dry before you erase near the ink so it doesn't smear then we're going to take this ring and glue this around the hole. And I like to just put my fingers through the hole and slide the ring around. going to put some dimensionals on the back of the sled and you might need a half a dimensional or a mini dimensional back there. Now the safest way to do this is to just take off the backings for the back of the sled and get this positioned where you want it. We want it as far to the bottom right as possible, but I do like to show just a bit of the green here. Then we're going to glue this detailed deer, and I'm just putting a dot or two up at the top of the antlers. And I want to slide this under 
Then I can gently take off the backings for the rest of the dimensionals. There we go. Then I want to add my bow. By the way, I mentioned that you might want to use real red. Um, you might want to stamp this in real red, and you could stamp this greeting too in real red if you'd like. I'm using my friend Gidget's bow maker. It's really a lovely bow maker, and it can make bows of all kinds of different sizes. And it's so easy to make perfect bows every time. So I'm going to just wrap it around. I think I do want it a little bit larger. Let's go there. I'm going to wrap it around and the piece that goes over the top is going to go down and through and over the top and then just tie it and just tie the rest of the square knot basically. and pull it tight and I find it easiest for me to trim this while it's on the bow maker and then I can put this on with a couple of mini glue dots and this goes up here and that's it I think it's a very fun fold card with a couple of surprises as you open it and it has the matching envelope. Here is the web address for this project where you'll find the free detailed directions and links for the products I used. And you'll find a PayPal button to order the card kit you saw in this video. Also on my website you'll find a shop button. Under Shop, you'll find products from Bev, Shopping Strategies, Frequent Shopper Points, a link to my online store at Stampin' Up. When you click Products from Bev, you'll find information about sharing my current products notebook in Evernote, and taggers. I started making taggers when all of those layering shapes came out, and it was so hard for me to figure out which one I used and how to tell somebody else which one I used. So I made taggers. Each tagger has the name of the dies, the item number, how many in the set, and each tagger has the size of that shape. I also sell my cardstock sampler, fine tip glue pen replacement tips, and large and small reclosable bags that I use for designing series paper, both the six by six and the 12 by 12. And I have a link for my friend's bow maker. Under inspiration, you can scroll my projects, look at the latest post, find out about the basics, which I've designed especially for new stampers and techie tips. Under getting organized, you'll find links to stamp case slips, product labels, large labels, case inserts, ink refill cases, lots of coloring tools, stamp pad storage that you can make for yourself for practically no money, catalog tabs, a quick reference, and a wish list with the catalog index, directions for my basic toolkit to go and my compact desktop toolbox. I have so many people looking for my Evernote current products notebook that I have a new tab just for that. You can find out how to share my searchable catalog. And if you're interested in joining my team, you can go to SIP Together and you can find out how to join my team so that you can either save money or make money. Almost all of those resources are free. More organization means more time for crafting. Talk to you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.